Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Explore the Extraordinary podcast. My name is Betty Guadagno. Today, I'm joined with Keisha. And Keisha has become a beautiful spiritual friend in my life. She has a wonderful testimony to share. She'll, she'll be at the IAMS conference uh, Labor Day weekend in Washington, D.C., sharing her story there as well. And I'm really excited to introduce you to our audience. And I'll just toss it right over to you, Keisha. Thanks so much for sharing. Thank you, Betty. I'm so excited to be here. All right. So again, my name is Keisha. Um, very excited to be here. Um, I kind of feel this experience is kind of my coming out party for myself. Um, and I'll get into that as I share a little bit about myself. Um, so take it back a little bit. I have been highly sensitive um, all of my life. Um, and it wasn't until a spiritual emergency that I had back in 2014 when that was more prevalent in my life. It was kind of like, um, yeah, so, well, let me get into that. Um, so in 2014, I started hearing things and seeing things and, you know, just having what I thought was a break in my reality. And that led me, um, you know, into the fifth floor, which at that hospital was the mental ward, um, you know, began seeing a psychiatrist. And I soon was put under the diagnosis as schizoaffective. And so coming into that, I tried to learn more about, you know, um, what that disorder is, because, you know, through my life growing up, I had also dealt with depression and anxiety and such, um, especially social anxiety. And so when I was learning about schizoaffective, you know, my doctor says there's not really a known cause for it, you know, um, and that it's a chemical imbalance in your brain. And I was always thinking to myself, like, a chemical imbalance, you know, so um, I took the medications and such and nasty side effects. All, all I ever noticed from the medications were side effects. Um, because from my experience, my, you know, episodes or my experiences um, would come in cycles and they would begin, you know, with, um, you know, some nightmares or what I perceive to be bad dreams. And then the voices would come back. And in my experiences, you know, um, I was all five senses, the seeing, hearing, touch, taste, smell. And so, um, you know, the whole shebang. And so in these cycles, you know, I started with have little whispers and stuff and then grow into um, to where it was just extreme and um, overbearing where it, you know, instead of being able to turn up the music or have the TV on that um, I could drown it out, you know, and distract myself. Distracting myself became my coping, me coping mechanism, excuse me. And um, so and another thing that noticed like during the night, these um, experiences, you know, seem to get worse. And also when I was alone. And so another coping me mechanism was to not be alone. And this led me into a series of relationships um, where there was a lot of trauma and, um, you know, it just, it was a dark time in my life and it was just a series of that. And so as these cycles would come, you know, it it's start to rise. And then at the peak of it, um, that peak would last for about a month, month and a half in entirety before, it, you know, it kind of softened again and I could get my grasp, you know, and kind of join reality again. And it's in those moments where, you know, that peak for that month, that month and a half, you know, just in surrounded by this darkness and, you know, this um, pain and such, you know, and it, Every day was a struggle. It was constant fight or flight, but my body was to the point of stress where I would just freeze. You know, I couldn't speak. I couldn't get things out my mouth. I was too afraid to say things because of, um, you know, my perceptions and stuff at the time, because um, my reality in this lifetime and then the um, experiences and the um, truth that my spirit was resonating with, um, you know, un understood to me at that time. Um, was very traumatizing, very, um, it was a lot. And so I began to isolate myself and push people away um, because it, the, my distrust for other people within the paranoia that persisted um, just grew and grew and grew. And so I became like a shell of myself. Um, 
or what I perceive to be a shell of myself. Um, and yeah, just isolated by myself in the darkness. And so, um, okay. And so it, that lasted quite a while. Um, <clears throat> you know, I was in and out of, you know, I was, um, had an addiction at the time. So every year I was in and out of, um, you know, the mental institute or the treatment center um, until, you know, the universe stepped in one day and said, nope, you're gonna, you know, you, you're gonna change your ways. So um, I had some legal issues and had some forced sobriety at that time. And at the end of that, you know, my, there, there's still some part of me that, you know, was not ready to let go of that. And interesting enough, um, I had a conversation with someone um, within my addiction and they asked me like, what, what do you use for, you know? And I used to ask myself that, like, why don't I stop? Why don't I like, you know, and they go, what are you numbing from? And I'm thinking to myself and I'm like, numbing from like, I don't know, I guess, you know, things just, you know, and it, it, it stuck with me, but yeah, I couldn't answer that. And, you know, um, one thing I always would ask people is, what do you want to be in life? You know, what do you want in your life? And, you know, they'd answer. And my answer was always, I just, I want to be happy. You know, happiness seemed elusive to me, um, you know? And so, yeah. Um, then as time continued, um, you know, as far as trauma and darkness and such there, I found with myself um, and if others can concur that, we, or I, um, I did not validate my experiences, um, you know, spiritually or physically in this life. And so the traumas and, you know, the abuse and such in my relationships that I encountered, I invalidated those, you know, I always thought someone somewhere else is going through worse things, you know, um, I don't, you know, I don't need to complain or I, I shouldn't complain, you know, this and that, because, um, you know, and so really invalidating my experiences, and which once my spiritual emergency began, um, even more so, because at that sense, you know, like, anyone I talked to or was around, you know, was like, that's not real, you know, this and that, like, why? And so it just, and then instead of invalidating myself and externally, you know, um, not feeling understood, not feeling heard, um, and also not feeling confident in expressing um, my truth and my experiences at that time, because I discounted them as, then as well, you know, not understanding that I was giving my power away in that aspect. And so, um, you know, and in invalidating my experiences, um, you know, throughout my life, then it led me to where it wasn't until I started um, doing um different drugs that led to physical withdrawals and you know um my circumstances changed to where you know um withdrawal was something that I couldn't avoid and that was miserable and it was it wasn't just a you know go through and be done and be done with it I still wanted to use and so you know I just scrounge up whatever to get something and then withdrawals again so it just a constant state and finally I sat there radically honest with myself and I was like this sucks I just want to be able to wake up one day and feel good. I I don't want to be sweating all day. I don't want to like dread going up the stairs because it drains all my energy. And so it was when I made that decision and my actions started following through with it that I got a download. And um, you know, a download from spirit. And in that instant, um, all the darkness and such that I had been um, finding myself in or, you know, um, encased in or my perception of it uh, the last eight years, it it just clicked and it was like, oh, this is spiritual, you know, um, this has all been spiritual. And because for all those years, you know, I was searching for resources and, you know, this and that. And I think the closest at the time when I was still searching was a TED talk that talked about, um, like schizophrenia or spiritual um, awakening, um, but yet the um, the ways in which spirit connected with me at that time um, seemed very, you know, it was, um, you know, it, it was exposing my shadow self. Um, and so 
I, I wasn't prepared for that and I wasn't aware of, you know, um, that or that aspect of myself, you know, it, and so, you know, when this download came in, then, um, you know, that's spiritual. So then that was the day that, um, I stopped using drugs and it's, it's my favorite story because all the times I've put in the past, I never could if I had any left in my sack. And this was the one time and the last time I've touched it. And I just, I threw away what was, what was left. And so, um, and I love that fact, you know, um, and so, um, after that, you know, I was tested a couple times, you know, to see if that was really my alignment. But what I realized is that, and I'll share this experience. So there's one day when just the, um, urge and the cravings to use again, um, were really strong. And, you know, usually I, I would distract my, uh, back to distracting, you know, if, um, so even the times when I had been sober before, I was still coping in other ways, which um, were distracting me from really getting back to knowing myself and healing. And so, you know, like um, going out and shopping or, you know, just being out and doing things. And so I was at a place in my life at this time where um, that wasn't an option. So finally, I just sat there with myself and I thought through everything. And I just, it was in that moment, just sitting there in that stillness with myself that I broke, I broke through those chains, you know, um, and I really asked myself, why do I want to use, you know, and it was to me, you know, the control and the attachment, you know, to this thing. Um, and so once I understood that, then um, I had more power behind my choice in it, you know, it wasn't just some um, like automated response, you know, um, and so that was very powerful for me. And so after um, that download, I, you know, was feverishly on YouTube, you know, 24 seven, the next like three months, um, looking up everything I could about spirit spiritual experiences and such. And what really started me off was um, there was a YouTuber and <laughs> it's beautiful because she had just started her channel around the time when um, I started looking this stuff up. Um, and I can't find her any longer, but, um, it beautifully guided and the message that really strung out or got to me was, um, that change your thoughts, like the power of thoughts, you know, and change your thoughts and you can change your life. And so, you know, I was getting all this information in and consistently for like those three months, um, affirmation, 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 negative thought come up, reprogramming it with the affirmation you know, and changing that narrative, you know, and um, during about these three, four months, the, um, you know, my connection with spirit, the voices and such, they, they had ceased. Um, and I had not understood that connection yet at that point, just that, you know, I was having, you know, a spiritual emergency rather than, um, you know, a mental or chemical imbalance in my brain. And so it's after about three, four months when um, I was watching a tarot reading and I got a message that, um, you know, they're coming back and, you know, then, you know, it, the, you know, my connection with the spirit was back, you know, they, I was hearing them again and such. And after that point, it's just been, yeah, working on myself, doing the work and they, in choosing and in opening myself, you know, and letting the angels and my spiritual team know that, I'm open for guidance and direct assistance and such. Step by step, you know, I have been guided toward things I need to look on to do the inner work to help me get to the next level. And all my life, I used to dwell in the past and, you know, um, kind of have this victim for me mentality, you know, like um, I was really, I had like a anxiety attachment and an abandonment fear. And so, um, that really came out in my relationships and spirit has led me, you know, to understand those things and, um, about the, so anywho, I'll get back to what I really want to point out. And it's that, um, you know, in those relationships and all that, I was always waiting for my knight in shining armor, you know, um, the perfect man to come sweep me off my feet and save me, you know, and rescue me and heal me. And, what I found is that um, no one was coming to save me. 
I was my own savior and I chose me and I chose to love me and the accountability that I was able to see and take, you know, in my relationships prior to that, um, is that I, I say I was breaking my own heart because I could see, you know, that those relationships were unhealthy and such, but my favorite movie is the perks of being a wallflower. And the quote from there is we, um, we accept the love we think we deserve. And so, um, you know, and choosing myself to save myself and choosing to love myself, um, I now am in a place where I I know my value and I know I'm worth it and I deserve it. And so I choose myself and I choose love every day. And, you know, I, I have come to where I have a growth mindset and I embrace change and I really see the power in, um, yeah, just choosing, you know, it's about improving yourself at least 1% in one way, learning one new thing every day and that, you know, falling forwards. So falling forwards has been a big thing um, for me. And uh, through this experience, you know, um, as a child, I look back, you know, and I was very, I say soft-spoken, but what comes to my mind is meek, like a meek little child, you know. Um, and I realized, you know, how iced over my heart was throughout this whole experience, or, you know, that those times leading up till now. And as it's like, melting you know and opening up um i i see how um expressing my emotions and being vulnerable and being open you know how i always thought i was before but um you know it it's powerful to actually be living it rather than just thinking you are you know um and so i feel like i just lost my train of thought <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, well, I have a million questions to ask if it's okay, <laughs> okay. for me to, for me to step in and yes. yeah, thank you so much for sharing. So there's some things that I'd like for maybe you to clarify a little bit in case there's somebody who's watching and they don't know what some of the terminology that we're using is. So can you share what your interpretation of the shadow is, and then maybe define spiritual emergency as well. Okay. So shadow for me, um, kind of like my, my inner self, the side of myself that, um, is there, but maybe I haven't acknowledged, um, you know, like, um, your wounded self, your, um, just the parts of you that I guess if you want to say need more love, need some love, you know, um, that we kind of tend to neglect or push aside or step down. Um, and in doing so, you know, we usually, I think those come out as, um, like, a re trauma responses, coping mechanisms, personality complexes, you know, where we say, I have this, so I'm like this, but really those are just, you know, um, messengers or, you know, alerts, awareness to say, Hey, you know, um, look here and explore that and go deeper. And, you know, there's something there for you to find. And I call that, you know, like the shadow work or your shadow self. So. That's great. Yes. I, yeah. I kind of have a similar interpretation of it as well. Like my shadow is not only my darkness, but there's other, there's other things to it. And I love how openly and vulnerably you're talking about overcoming different kinds of addictions, not only drug addiction, but also codependency, which is an addiction as well. You know, like being addicted to the feeling of another person, to the experience of another person. And I'm curious if maybe you can share some of the tools that you use, you know, because I feel like it's very simple to say like, love yourself, but it's not <laughs> actually that simple to carry it out. You know, like it seems like it's a simple concept, but for me as well, like overcoming addictions and integrating my shadow into my light. I, the same things came up for me, especially with codependency. Like I had to find what are the things that are lovable about myself? Why do I keep manifesting the same partner over and over and over again? So I'm curious if you've found any tools that you use, um, in that process. Yes. Um, so where I started, where I started from for myself is getting back into those self-care habits, which, you might overlook, but it's something as simple as brushing your teeth, showering regularly, putting on clean clothes every day, um, going outside, um, you know, doing things for yourself 
just because they feel good, you know? Um, wearing something you want because it makes you feel good, doing something because it makes you feel good and understanding that the power that comes from pleasure and not denying yourself those pleasures, you know? And that's also, you know, comes down to that value and worth, you know, cause um, I denied myself a lot of those. And I, you know, in those aspects, it was like through justifications, which were like, you know, excuses or see on sound and reasonable, but like, oh, I don't have time for that, you know, or, um, oh, I'll do that later. But really it's putting yourself first. And it was a big adjustment because it feels, you know, selfish at first. But I think selfish just has a context to that word because there's quite a few people who probably, I'd say, you know, um, who see that as selfish could use some of that kind of self-care for themselves as well. Um, as far as things I've been doing, um, mirror work is one, you know, um, affirmations, um, being gentle and compassionate with myself has been a big thing. Um, cause I find myself, even when I'm doing things, um, as far as, you know, like, uh, say, um, well, as part of opening my voice and sharing that, I I began, you know, a Facebook page and uh, to write a blog. But in doing those things, um, you know, that inner critic comes up, and it's um, I find that that critic is, you know, well, that actually led me to something else, um, which I can touch on later. But as far as um, yeah, that self love, um, showing yourself love in everything and understanding that, uh like we are perfect exactly as we are in this moment and that you know um everything has a purpose um those things about you that you seem to not like or you know tell yourself is this or that it's um there's a purpose behind those and I found through uh, you know like exploring those and looking into those they've really helped me connect deeper with myself, you know, and in spirit and in all those things. So, um, and it's really helped me, you know, like hype myself up, like, oh my gosh, like, you know, like I thought, like one thing I'll share is like, I have a lot of arm hair, you know, for what's considered feminine and all my life I shaved that, but coming into myself, you know, um, all these type of things, it's, um, it's like it's helped me step further into my power by embracing myself fully and so understanding that everything has a purpose and that you yeah and so that purpose makes you whole and makes you perfect just as you are and knowing that you don't need to change and so knowing that for internally and um letting go of any validation or external stuff you know um opinions because that's where things get fuzzy and that's where we tend to compare ourselves and it's like comparing apples and oranges and understanding that, you know, you, you are this fruit and you, you are ripe um, and not to let, you know, other fruits spoil you. So. I love that. Thank you so much. So, yeah, I'm curious, you mentioned something about mirror work and I just, another, you know, like to clarify for maybe somebody who doesn't know what that is, can you just share briefly what mirror work is? Yeah. Um, for me, it's really just, you know, standing in front of the mirror and taking a, you know, an inventory of yourself. Um, because a lot of times I feel like not only do we avoid eye contact with other people and passing as such, but we don't really take a eye, you know, eye contact with ourselves. And so for me, I like to look at myself, you know, and type myself up affirmations, say, I'm proud of you. I love you. Um, you know, and looking at myself and instead of saying, oh, look at that or, you know, oh, you know, I sit there and I say, I'd like to show that spot more love. You know, I'd like to, you know, because um, there's nothing wrong with it. But if something sticks out for me, I can show you more love, you know, because just, you know, like I was saying, we are perfect just as we are. And so reflecting that in that and, you know, that power of looking at yourself and doing that, I feel like you just, um, yeah, it, it's powerful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I I love this whole conversation. I love the idea of the whole spiritual journey is not just light and love. I mean, you know, a lot of us that have spiritual experiences, they, you know, we experience light and love. 
but there's a whole, yeah, for me, there was like a whole mess of human to come back to, you know, like an, and a lot of inner work needed to be done. So how long was your process? Do you feel like it took you from the state of spiritual emergency to actually beginning to do the inner work? What was the timeline like? <laughs> um, it was about eight years. <laughs> so yes. Um, and back to what you had asked previously about spiritual emergency. Um, so when the, uh, my, my, you know, what's known more commonly as psychosis symptoms started, um, you know, a state of spiritual emergency. And in, I think, more Eastern cultures, um, you know, that is the uh, symbolic, uh, sometimes known as a shaman. And generally in those cultures, um, you know, a shaman or someone um, like an elder will guide and coach someone or, you know, someone going through a spiritual emergency in order to navigate and understand, um, you know, what is happening with them um, more. And so, when my, you know, these um, experiences began, um, you know, I, I did not understand that was a spiritual emergency. I thought I had, my psyche was fractured, you know, that my mind and, you know, like I was saying through all the medications and such, I could not shake that, you know, even my gut was, you know, so that this is real. Like, I don't know how to explain it and I don't know, but I think that's what kept me in the fear so long. And like on that constant, you know, because I was at odds with my mind, with my body, you know, and it just, I, it was hard to understand. So in spiritual emergency, um, you know, in that aspect of when those symptoms or, you know, those, um, that connection shows up. Another way I've read um, is that, um, you know, when you are getting close to a certain point in your timeline, um, you know, um, spirit will step in in that sense in order when you are needing to, you know, like end something or a habit or something like that type of a thing. And that um, they'll kind of step in and kind of do, you know, um, to get you back more on the, do I want to say the in divine timing, if that makes sense. Um, and so that kind of resonated with me a little bit as well after I had heard that, but I love that. Yeah, that, that the TED talk that you're referencing that you had referenced when you were sharing before uh, is entitled Spiritual Awakening or Psychosis. And man, it would be so professional if I knew the guy's name who gave the TED talk, <laughs> but I don't. But that TED talk also really changed my life as well. So I'm curious and you know, like we're not doctors or scientists or anything like that, but do you feel just from your own personal experience that um, the label of schizoaffective is overused. Do you think that all of these people are having some sort of spiritual emergency or spiritual awakening, or do you feel like there's temperance between the two? Um, my personal opinion, um, for me, I like this present moment of my understanding is that I think all mental illness and such, um, is spiritual, you know, um, and so uh, I, the reason about schizophrenia and other, you know, um, diagnosis and stuff that I tend not to like is that it creates this, um, like narrative or identity or stigma, you know, so when I first had that diagnosis, I, you know, Googling it, I was like, so this is my life, you know, this is my experience, you know, schizophrenics have like shorter lifespans and they lose, you know, um, the uh like certain what do I want to say um like communication and those type of like just um decline and stuff and I you know and I think some people might come to accept that you know and then not strive for more beyond just because of that label and so that's what I dislike about that yeah thank you for sharing that I have similar beliefs as well so, yeah, I want to see if maybe there's anything else that you feel called to share about as we begin to wind down. I know that some, something came up. I wish I had written it down. But if there's <laughs> anything else, any other experience that you feel called to share about, maybe you can talk about um, like what you're doing for the collective. Like I mentioned, you're going to be at the IONS conference this Labor Day weekend in Washington, D.C. That's amazing. And um, yeah, whatever other projects you have that you're working on. Yeah. Um... 
Uh, something um I'd like to share is that I've been on um this train of thought about the um idea or concept of remembering and forgetting. And for me, I don't believe there is such a thing as forgetting. I think that's just a term that's been coined for and it, you know, it decreases our power. But um through experiences of my own, you know, um in regards to the subconscious, I think you know, for me, the subconscious is like the background app recorder. It is always recording, you know, always computing. And I think we discredit um, a lot of things that, you know, happen within our lives and such. And for me, you know, it was um, trauma from when I was younger and such that I had blocked out. But yet, you know, not having that in my awareness and my conscious, it surface itself in many of my, you know, um, relationships, my personality, you know, and such like that, that, you know, if I hadn't done the shadow work and such that I would have just, you know, like accepted as such. And so a big thing of mine is being fully in your power and that is being radically honest, um, you know, and as far as experiences, every experience is valid, you know, whether it's a dream, whether it's a vision, whether it's a thought that popped in your head, however it made you feel, you know, that is valid. It does not depend on, you know, um, anything else. So just validating yourself, um, you know, and in doing so, you know, and I also feel that words are important in that sense. So I don't like to say forgetting or, you know, um, I like to use the word remembering or, um, well, yeah. And so, yeah, just um, how you talk to yourself and everything else, just be empowering, be accountable and understanding for me that um, to be fully in my power, that I am in control of everything in my reality. You know, um, if someone, what's a good example? Um, like my dog, when he irritates me and stuff um instead of you know getting angry or yelling at him I'm saying okay I'm getting angry why am I getting angry he's not making me angry because he can't make me because I'm in full power of me so um in in doing that we sit back into our power and that is where we remove these um like we put ourselves outside of the box and start removing the limitations you know um that have been you know um that we, yeah, just growing up and stuff that we have found ourselves, you know, through conditioning and programming and stuff. Um, and so, um, let's see, I guess another thing I like to touch on is how um, with children and stuff, you know, the, you see all their creativeness and their playfulness and such, and um, the spirit of the inner child that is within all of us and how you know, unleashing that genius and such. And that's part of the, you know, being fully in our power and using, um, you know, do I want to say powerful word? Um, um, it's, it's not coming to me, but yeah, choosing words and such and diet and lifestyle, such as, you know, the music you listen to, the TV you watch and all that, it is all part of the, you know, what you're absorbing into yourself. And that all matters. Every little thing matters, you know, and I'm going to trickle more forward with this. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, so. And in context of every little thing matters, you know, um, every thought, every action, every move. And so it is in that sense that truly one person can change the world. You know, one person holds the door up for an, open for another person that can make that person's day who goes home to you know, um, make a comment on someone's social media and that trickles forward and forward and forward. And through doing all these things and living, you know, with your heart open, you know, it's that ripple effect that every little thing matters. And, you know, we, I think we get outside ourselves that to change the world, you have to, you know, create this whole thing. But the truth is, um, you change the world through your changing yourself and in every little thing you do by choosing to live, you know, um, heart-centered and choosing love so yeah that was beautiful thank you I'm so grateful that for your willingness you know for for me I feel like it's really 
it's not an easy feat to come into, you know, this power to be able to actually share authentically about what's going on with us when, when it comes to sort of these, these spiritual experiences. And that's why I'm so grateful for this space that we have that, you know, like we're able to stand in our power. I'm grateful to be a part of your coming out. I'm really grateful that we're part of some spiritual communities together. You know, like when I had my spiritual experience, I felt very called to find my tribe. And I knew that they existed. I knew it. I knew it because I met them in the non-physical and I asked them to meet me in form. And all I had to do was set that intention. And you're talking about the power of thoughts and the power of words. And all I had to do was set the intention to find my people. And I was magnetized to them. And I'm so grateful that you're part of some of those groups with me. And, uh, you know, we have sharing groups on IONS online as well. And that's a big part of my spiritual community. So I just want to encourage anybody who's looking for spiritual community to come onto our online uh, forum. And we have uh, open sharing groups on Sundays and Thursdays, and we have theme groups. And it's a beautiful community of people that we have. And I'm so grateful that you're a part of my life. I'm so grateful to be part of your coming out. I can't wait to see what else you accomplish on this, on this wave that you're surfing. And um, yeah, I'm very, very grateful today. Is there anything else that you'd like to say before we close? Um, yes, there is one thing. Um, as far as, you know, I'm talking about validating your experiences. Um, this is one way I'm doing mine. And so I urge you and I challenge you all to express yourself openly and freely. Um, because when you show up authentically, authenticity meets you there. And, you know, the biggest way to change the world is by showing up with love and you know, um, your voice is valid, you know, your truth is valid, it's important, and our voice is how we express ourselves through this vessel, and so, you know, um, the world is ready to hear you, so share your story. I love that. Thank you so much for being here today, and we'll see you guys next time. Be wavy. Thank you.